Joining us now is Ansar Khan. He is with M Live Media Group, the Red Wings hockey beat writer. Joining us once again on the Megacast as we're about at the halfway point of the 2021-2022 season with the Detroit Red Wings currently in ninth place in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Ansar, welcome into the show. And, and, and as we start off, can you appraise the Red Wings season so far? Obviously, it's still very much in the infancy of the rebuild of this team, but uh, they're, they're close to a playoff position being currently in ninth place. They got a lot of promise in their young guys. How would you appraise so far the performance of this Detroit Red Wings team in 2022? Well, overall, I, I think they have to be pleased with the progress. Uh, they have taken a, a fairly significant step here. Uh, you know, going back to just two years ago, they were by far the worst team in the league uh, in a historically bad season for them. So they have come a long ways in two years. They, they showed some progress last year, uh, moved up a, a couple of notches uh, in the standings, and, and this year even more so. Uh, but saying that too, there is still uh, a lot of room uh, for improvement and uh, still some troubling areas, uh, namely their, their uh, defensive play, which was supposed to be a strong point for them heading into the season, has actually regressed. Uh, they're giving up more goals uh this year so far than they did last year and the road record they uh continue to struggle on the road uh they have uh, actually the uh they, they they they've played fairly well at home they have the uh, the biggest differential uh, in the league as far as uh, home uh and road uh, points percentage so uh, those two areas uh right there i think uh, getting the goals against down and uh, just improving a little bit uh, on the road would be uh, focuses for this team uh, as they approach the, uh, the midway point of the season. Yeah, I mean, they're in ninth place right now. They, they're, there's a lot of positives, as you identified, with this team uh, going forward, especially with their youth, and they're going to continue uh, to develop this team. And, and being in ninth place about halfway through the season, you continue to surge a little bit. You have those, those moments where you have a hot streak. You continue to improve on some of those negatives, particularly on the defensive, uh, and on the defensive end. Uh, all of a sudden, you could sneak, see this team sneak into the playoffs you know, as an eighth, eighth seed, maybe they overachieve as a seven seed but you're going to need to keep your team healthy as well with that. And, of course, uh, a few nights ago, Dylan Larkin uh, had left the game against the Anaheim Ducks uh, with what was, what was identified uh, as an upper body injury. Do you know exactly what the injury is or, at the very least, uh, how long the team expects to be without their captain? Yeah, actually, uh, according to Jeff Blaschel yesterday, it's uh, not that bad. He described it as a day-to-day -day injury and that uh, Larkin – might actually return uh, tomorrow at home against Winnipeg. So uh, looks like uh, they caught a break there. Um, the other, the other uh, significant injury uh, that they've dealt with all season, uh, Jacob Verana, who uh, in, injured his shoulder in uh, training camp, or re-aggravated an older shoulder injury in training camp and then had surgery on it, has been sk skating. He isn't uh, shooting yet, but uh, he seems to be making decent progress, and they're hoping that uh, he can return uh, maybe in about a month or maybe four to six weeks, sometime in February is what they're hoping for. But it does look like they will get him back uh, this season, and that certainly will provide a, a nice offensive boost. We're joined by Ansar Khan, Red Wings beat writer with M Live Media Group, joining us on the Megacast. You can uh, read all of his articles and keep up to date on everything going on with Red Wings hockey by visiting MLive.com uh, and clicking on their additional links for Red Wings hockey. And so, uh, as I've mentioned multiple times, as, as you've touched on already, uh, the promise with this team is is mostly centered in its youth. Some great performances already uh, this year for the rookies, particularly uh, in Lucas Raymond and Mort Sider, but there's also also a lot of promise uh, with other young guys such as uh, rookie goaltender uh, such as uh, goaltender uh, Alex Nedeljkovic I apologize he is not a rookie uh, can you talk about the growth of these three players in particular um, and, and where we could p potentially see them hitting that rookie wall that often happens where you have a rush of performance for guys that have a lot of promise to come in and they play some great hockey but eventually they kind of taper off where do you expect that to happen with these three key young players on this roster yeah, those uh, three players, especially uh, Cider and uh, and Raymond, yeah. really are the, are the are the main reason why this team's taken uh, uh, a jump this season. 
I, you know, with Cider especially, I, he's been very consistent, uh, very impressive, and, and maybe not as much of a surprise because he, he had, he's a little bit older. He was drafted uh, in 2019, had a, a, a good first uh, season in uh, Grand Rapids, and then during the pandemic, he, he was exceptional in the Swedish uh, Hockey League, uh, was defenseman of the year there. So they kind of expected going into the season good things from him. Uh, but even even saying that, he's, he's certainly, I think, exceeded expectations, particularly on the offensive end. He's providing more offense uh, with assists than I think that the team imagined, and he's been solid defensively, logging a lot of minutes. And he's doing that as kind of the uh, the anchor, really, on the, on the blue line. Uh, Raymond is, is the bigger surprise. Uh, I don't think they expected, uh, certainly didn't expect uh, him to be this productive this soon. And uh, I mean, he was a guy that they really had targeted to play in Grand Rapids this season to, to get some more development time and then maybe join the team midway through the season or even next season. But he played so well in training camp that he forced his way onto the team. And he's been a, an ideal fit on that top line with uh, Larkin and Bertuzzi. Now, I, you know, in Raymond's case, he, you can say he's sort of hit a, a bit of a wall. He's gone, I don't know, uh, 10, 12 games without a goal, but he is still producing some assists and contributing that way. So I, I think you're seeing a bit of a slowdown with his game. Uh, but Cider, I not so much. I think I don't think there's there's as much of a concern there with him. Now, with um, the other guy you mentioned, Nadalkovic had a strong performance last night, really stole them a point um, uh, with, I believe, a 37 save performance against the Sharks. Yeah. He's, uh, even though he qualifies as a rookie because he didn't play uh, 25 games last year during the abbreviated season, he obviously is not new to this. He uh, finished third in Calder Trophy balloting last year. Uh, with Carolina, uh, had a, a strong what was a rookie season as well last year. It's kind of one of those fluke things because of the abbreviated season that he still qualifies as a rookie this year. But certainly he, he proved himself last year, and, the, and the, the question mark was coming this season, can he repeat that, or is he just a one-year wonder? And he's shown that he's not, that he is uh, definitely a good NHL goalie. And... Uh, you know, he replaces Jonathan Bernier, who played well for them the last, past couple of years and has done done a, uh, really a, a superb job. We're joined by Ansar Khan. I'm live, Red Wings hockey beat writer on the Megacast. And uh, Ansar, just yesterday, uh, an announcement was made by the Red Wings that they are bringing Nick Lidstrom back uh, into the organization. He'll be serving as their VP of hockey operations. Obviously, there's that great connection there. He's a former captain of the Red Wings. He's a Red Wings legend. He's, he, he will be... Uh, he will always be highly regarded among the fan base, so it's going to be well received. But from an operational standpoint, what was what what led to the decision uh, by Steve Eisenman and by the Red Wings organization to hire Nick Lidstrom in this important role in the front office? Yeah, no, it was a tremendous hire, really. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times uh, uh, when a franchise brings back a legendary player, there's sometimes skepticism. Uh, especially one who doesn't have any front office experience is yeah. just bringing in a name. But that's not the case with Lidstrom. He's, he's always been very well respected, uh, just not only for his accomplishments as a seven-time Norris Trophy winner, uh, the Conn Smythe Trophy winner, as playoff MVP, uh, a former captain, uh, the guy who succeeded to Steve Eiserman as captain. But he's always been very cerebral, uh, just a, uh, you know, as I'm sure you're aware, the, the teammates way back in the day yeah. uh, nicknamed him the perfect human, uh, just not only for his, uh, his on-ice performance, but the way he carries himself off the ice. And he's a guy that even Ken Holland, for, for many years, uh, leaned on him for advice as far as player moves at the trade deadline, free agency moves. They would typically, uh, you know, talk to Lidstrom and get his input uh, it, because they respected his opinion and his knowledge so much. So it really, uh, it was kind of a no-brainer for Steve Eisman to bring him into the organization. 
it was just a question of when Lidstrom felt that uh, you know he wanted to uh, to get into uh, get back into the into the game on a, on a full time basis. He had been doing a little bit of scouting in Sweden for the Red Wings, but uh, not uh, not to this level of involvement that he will be in. He'll be involved in all aspects of hockey operations uh, in his new uh, job. So on to our la- uh, lastly, last week Saturday, uh, uh, the Red Wings radio broadcast made made history as uh, their as Red Wings digital reporter Daniela Bruce filled in uh, in the color commentator position for Paul Woods on the radio broadcast, becoming the first woman uh, to fill that that role on a Red Wings broadcast. Uh, being that you're in Red Wings circles, I'm sure you've, you've been uh, around Daniela and, and have been uh, speaking with her regularly about uh, the Red Wings and, and in passing. Can you talk to her, talk about that historic moment of her being on the Red Wings broadcast, being the first woman to be filling in that role, and, and as well as uh, just her involvement with the Detroit Red Wings organization as a, as a member of the media covering the, this Red Wings team in in what is usually such a such a men's club of reporters. Yeah, no, it was tremendous uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, very good uh, for the Red Wings to give her that opportunity. Daniela has been been uh, the, uh, the the host uh, of the uh, the show that they do the they do uh, between periods and pregame analysis on the scoreboard at the arena does a great job with that and uh, there was uh, really never any any question that she would be a, a, a real good fill-in for Paul Woods uh, during the, that three game uh, West Coast trip uh, and uh, no it was it was tremendous she has a uh, great knowledge of the team in the game and uh, conveys it real well and I think uh, it was really like I said a good uh, uh, a good thing for the Red Wings uh, uh, to give her that opportunity, and she was just a natural at it. Yeah, and she did an excellent job. I listened to the radio broadcast, and and the, it goes to show once again that we have such great, uh, great reporters here in, in the Detroit area reporting for our sports teams, and and, and that includes. Um, a number of, of excellent women as well that are reporting on these teams and are heavily involved with these teams. Daniela did, ama- did a fantastic job on that, ra- on that radio broadcast on Saturday night, and I'm sure we'll hear a lot more of her in the future covering Red Wings hockey and the NHL as well as other sports in Detroit and around the U.S. Ansar, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Yeah, glad to be with you.